So um, it's great going after Robert because I always learn something new that Instead's doing that I didn't realize they were doing before. Um, you know, yesterday we had a really good talk from Steve Vosloo, and one of the questions he asked was, um, how in Africa is participation different? Uh, is it there even? And, it, and the answer is yes, and, uh, it, but it looks different. And um, that struck me again today listening to Kazi because, you know, that's the same in the developing world all, all, the, all the world over, which is that we have this world and this paradigm we live in here. And it's hard to bridge the two. And you can't do it without going. And it's really hard to do if you're not a part of the culture that you're trying to do it in. Now, I probably should have done a talk here on Afrogadget and Ingenuity. Um, that probably been more interesting, and it's a lot more interactive. But uh, instead, I'm going to be doing a talk on Ushahidi and uh, some of the efforts that we've done in Kenya and now globally around crowdsourcing crisis information. So Ushahidi, uh, let me give you some background too. I, um, I grew up in Sudan and Kenya, and, uh, and, and then since then I've been working on technology in Africa, and so I have this background <coughs> that allows me to do this. Uh, Ushahidi means testimony in Swahili, uh, and it's an organization that I co-founded with a number of other Kenyans uh, last January um, in the wake of the botched election. So in the midst of that madness and destruction, we quickly deployed a website that gave every Kenyan a voice. Using their mobile phone or the internet, they could report incidents of violence or peace happening around them. Ushahidi was a way to tell their stories when the media was elsewhere or they were silent, a means to tell the world what was happening. Some of these stories, uh, this is from January 17th. It's just a, just a couple of the, of the messages we were receiving. A 13-year-old boy was laid to rest next to his uncle's house. The burial was attended by hundreds of residents who wailed and lit up bonfires, police roadblocks, these types of things. And it looked rather rudimentary, and it was. The technology was simple. It was three-year-old technology. We didn't think anything of it. In fact, we were embarrassed when people started making noise about it. Because basically what we were doing is we were saying, hey, Let's create a way that anybody can use what's in their pocket to send information. Since then, we've deployed it to, we've redeveloped the website, uh, redeveloped the whole platform, and it's been deployed into the DR Congo. It's been used last month by Al Jazeera in Gaza. And it's being used by small NGOs all over Africa, but here's one in Kenya where they're, they're trying to track peace heroes. So we've come a long way in one year. And it's no small part to this being an open source community-led effort. Developers from Ghana, Uganda, Malawi, Tanzania, South Africa, the US, and Europe all take part. Fans, bloggers, designers, and the media from all over the world have helped raise awareness of the new platform. But you have to, under to understand Ushahidi, you have to understand what it, what's at its core um, in our roots in Africa. The challenges brought about by bad governance, poverty, low bandwidth, all the negative things that you associate with Africa, all the challenges, as Kazi said, also provide an incredible opportunity. The developers who are coming up with solutions in this continent the ones who are writing software are hacking hardware, are creating for some of the harshest environments and use cases in the world. We know that if it works in Africa, it will work anywhere. That means we need to focus first on mobile phones, then on the internet. From the beginning, Ushahidi has been about letting ordinary people use what's in their pocket, their mobile phone, to send in reports happening around them. This is the default device. We focus on mobile-only interaction as a basic tenant and creating a platform that serves the developing world first, then offering that platform to the West as something that they can use too. This is one of our developers in Kenya. Uh, he, drove, he developed the J2ME Java application for Ushahidi all on his own without any requests by me. And uh, when I was traveling there one time, he just walked up and said, hey, I created this for you. So we're all part of a sea change in news and information flow and transparency, where the barriers are finally so low that anyone can tell their story and the whole world can see it. 
There's no stopping the change in information dynamics. There's only harnessing in ways to add more value. The problem is that it's no longer a one-to-many mass broadcast. It's now a mass broadcast to mass broadcast environment. How do you stop six million SMS messages without crippling your own infrastructure and ability to get work done? The answer is not to take it down or, or make people share less. That will never happen. Instead, it is in figuring out a way to harness information from an even greater number of people. The more data that is collected, the less chance that bad data can have an adverse effect. Mobile phones, be they simple SMS-only phones like those found in Africa, are already being used to get the word out during tense times. We saw it with Ushahidi in Kenya, again in Zimbabwe's election, in Mumbai and in Gaza. Those are the hot flash political emergencies and mainstream media is concerned, as are many experts and government officials, about how empowering ordinary people have become in gathering, disseminating, and amplifying information in ways that just weren't possible before. <coughs> Ushahidi is here to make it even more open. Using what we've learned from building Ushahidi, our goal is to do one thing very well, create an engine that makes it easy to crowdsource crisis information. I'm gonna take a, just a couple minutes and talk about what we see as the next big thing. Um, and it's interesting that Evolve from instead is, is following the same course. So our capacity, our capacity to report eyewitness information is vastly increasing. Um, our ability to consume it and to understand what's going on is not. So this is a, a chart from uh, the Twitter reports over three days of what was happening in Mumbai. How do you know what to listen to? This is a lot of information. What we're seeing is there's a lot of wasted crisis information, a lot of wasted data. And we need to do something about this. What we're particularly concerned about is these first three hours, which we consider this window where the information is new, it's unknown, a lot of people are still just hearing about it, so the first three to six hours of an event. And what we've realized is what we, what we and many others are doing is taking a bunch of information and creating a way to gather more information, and we're getting information overload, where we have a lot of information, so that's good in a way, but we still can't do too much with it. So what we're talking about doing here is taking this information, applying the crowd to it to help filter it, okay? Now there's machine ways of doing this and there's people ways. And, we're, and the way Ushahidi has always worked is working from the crowd, working from the human side of the interaction. Applying the crowd to it. We call this, we've been working on it since Mumbai uh, within Ushahidi. And we call it, um, our operation is called uh, Swift River. And it's talking about those first three to six hours. So we can refine those results and get weighted results afterwards. And, and this is, I think, what a lot of us need to pay attention to because in the, in the increased hyper-information flow in the, in the coming years, or that is happening right now, in fact, we have to understand what will give us a better probability of, of truth or untruth in any given amount of data. And some of this can be done by machine and some of it can be done by humans. And even when you combine them both, you're going to get a better... Uh, a better result, but you're still not going to be 100% accurate. And that's okay. Because in the first three to six hours, in the first day, any information and any indication of the probability of it being correct is more important than having no information or having the muddled information we have now. So uh, Ushahidi is a small team. Um, we have a fifth person that we've just added, uh, Henry Otto from Ghana. And... Um, you know, we think we're at the, at the heart of something that's really important that's going on, and it's the crux of new worlds of media information and citizen journalism. Um, it's going to take a whole community, though, not just us five, to do this. And so we hope that you and uh, your organizations will, will help us try and solve some of these problems and, and partner with us. Ushahidi is a free, open source tool, so you can take it and use it on your own, no questions asked, go load it up on your own server, and uh, go to town. Um, if you're interested in doing that, let me know. And uh, lastly, thank you to UNICEF for having us here. It's, it's been a great pleasure talking to you.